Hi guys, it's Darren here from DeepBlueApps.com. Just going to give you an overview of Game Salad. Now, when you first open the program, you're going to be pretty daunted and bewildered and probably scratching your head to what's going off, but don't worry. After a few days, a few hours, depending on uh, your level, then you'll soon get used to it. I remember when I first opened it, it was pretty harsh, a uh, pretty steep learning curve, although I did come from a, a pretty similar background with Game Maker. But we'll have a look. This is what you're going to be faced with when you first open your new project. You can rename this to what you want. You can put anything in here. Now, the first thing you want to do, <coughs> excuse me, is go into Scenes. You see, we've got an initial scene here. Now, you can left click just underneath it, and let's just call this Title. We'll go in, double click on this, and you can see now this is the main part. Game Salad, this is where you're going to spend all your time. And you can see we've got actors, attributes, devices, game and scene. We've got loads of uh, behaviours down here. First thing you want to do though is click this little plus sign and that'll make you an actor. Now we can drag the actor onto the scene, hit preview and you can see the actor on the scene there. I want to move this one in the middle though. So we're just going to double click on the actor, don't unlock it, just double click, we'll go into its position and we'll change its position to 240, 160 and that's bang in the middle of the screen. Now you can have images for your actors, you just go into the images, hit plus and find some images on your desktop. Let's just go there, I've got one there, the Utopian Games logo. Now to add that image to your actor you just drag it up and there you go. That image has now changed the actor's size. We'll just rename this actor here and we'll call this title. Now I'm going to want to go in here and have some behaviours. So I want this one up. When the user presses this, then I want it to go to the next scene. So we're going to make a rule. You can make a rule by coming down here and dragging this one over or you can just create the rule button here because creating rules is one of the most common things you're going to be doing in Game Salad they've actually had a, added a little tab at the top here so we're going to do when touch is pressed I'm going to come down here to change scene and it will automatically go to the next scene now if you've got loads of different scenes and you want it to go to another scene then you can obviously come down here and select one of your scenes but because we just want it to go to the next one when touch is pressed we'll go here now we'll go back to home because we need another scene so we'll press this button here the plus sign and then I'll make another scene and we'll call this one level one we can just go in here and this is our level one scene go back to the title up here by pressing the scenes we'll press preview you can see we've got the splash screen there press on it and it will change scene obviously you can make it a little bit more fancy than that we can add some rules so we'll come down to behaviors so we'll do if touch is pressed let's just interpolate Now we're coming in here into the actor, title, colour, alpha to zero. We'll have that done at two seconds. And instead of changing the scene straight away, I'll press on this one. And now when we click, uh, click create the rule, it'll automatically add a rule to this one selected here. And then we'll do attribute. We'll go in here. This is our actor, the background title. So this is basically saying when colour alpha is zero, go to the next scene. This one is saying when touch is pressed, it will start interpolating the alpha down to zero over a period of two seconds. And this one here, this rule here, is saying when the alpha is actually zero, go to the next scene. So you can see it's white now. We'll touch it, and over the space of two seconds, it's interpolated down, made it invisible, and now it's gone to the next scene. We'll go back to level one. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll make another actor. 
call this hero. Now we'll go in <clears throat> and we'll change its size. All the actors by default are 100 by 100. We don't want an actor that big, so we'll do it 32 by 32. And the same thing here, you can go in, find an image for it, and plonk it on. Uh, we're just going to change its colour though, we'll have a nice blue colour. And what should we do with this one? We'll have a behaviour. We'll make a rule. And when I've got the right arrow key down, I want this actor to go to the right. So we're going to select the move, drag it in there. This is a speed, we'll do 100. We'll do relative to the scene because we want it to always go right. If you do relative to actor, then the actor starts rotating, it will actually carry on wherever the actor's facing. We need to drag this actor onto the scene, like so. We can even go into this scene and we can even change the colour of the scene. So we can have a grey scene, blue scene the same colour. We'll leave it at the default black for now though. Now you can just preview this scene here so you don't have to go through the whole game. Now when I press the right key you can see the actor moving to the right. And it's going to disappear now because we've got no control camera on it. And the scene is only 480 by 320 long. So we'll go in here, we'll come down, control camera, we'll go back, hit preview, press right, and you can see the actor is now moving across the screen still, um, the scene still, sorry, but it's still disappearing. And the reason for that is because the scene is only um, 480. If you go into scene, attributes, size, we can actually make the scene double its normal size. And now you can see here, the scene is actually double. So I'm just gonna put a blocker actor in here. Just gonna drag a couple of these in here. Otherwise you won't actually visually see the, uh, the actor moving. So when you can go in, you can change the size of these very quickly and easily. We're just going to preview this scene now, so you can actually see the actor scrolling along. Now when it gets to the edge here, the camera is going to start following it because we've got the control camera. And you can see it will go all the way to the end of the scene and then it will disappear off the scene. Now the camera control is here. You can actually uh, reduce the tracking area. If you press the camera, this is actually the tracking area for the actor. So we're going to reduce this. This is the X tracking area. Don't worry about the Y for now because we're not going up and down. So we'll just reduce this right down to nothing. We'll now hit preview. And now when the actor, the blue hero, gets to the middle of the scene, you can see the camera is now following it from the middle. Now with a little bit of an advanced method, you can actually get the camera to go anywhere. Um, but that's for a later date. You can actually have things, actors colliding with each other. So for example, if we turn this round here and put a collide rule uh, behavior, sorry, in, we can actually have the hero colliding with the blocker. Now, when we go in to the main game, we'll press right, and you can see they both collide. It doesn't look very good because they've both moved, and we'll just go back to the blocker. We'll come down to its physics section. And because I don't want the blocker to move, I'm going to uncheck that and just go back so we can just preview this scene without going back to the title page. Now when I go back, you notice the blocker is not moving, but the blue actor started spinning round and was a little bit shaky. The reason the blue actor was shaky for a start is because restitution is set to its highest value, which is one. Restitution is like bounce, so you can imagine bouncing a ball down on the floor. If its restitution is zero, <clears throat> and the actor it's colliding with is zero, then it'll have no bounds. So we'll go into the hero, and we need to set the restitution up for that as well. So now, the hero and the blocker have no bounds at all. So now, you notice, they're just going across. The reason the blue actor 
is spinning is because we've not got fixed rotation on and when it's hitting the block it's causing it to spin round. I don't want that so I'm going to have fixed rotation. I'm going to go back and now you'll see it'll go up to the top over the block and it'll carry on going. Um, let's say I want some bullets. Let's just have another actor. We'll call this one bullets. We'll make this one a red colour. Again you can change the image if you want. The size is a little bit big at 100 100. They're going to be pretty big bullets. So we'll do a 10 by 10. Now I'm going to use uh, behaviour on the hero. Make another rule. When keyboard space is pressed I'm going to want to spawn the bullets. So I'm going to come down here, find spawn and this will just basically every time I press the keyboard, uh, the space bar down on the keyboard, we need to find the actor. It's going to spawn the bullets and its position is going to be 0, 0. So the bullets are going to appear in the middle of the actor. Now we need to make some rules for the, uh, we need to make a rule for the bullet or behavior for the bullet and I'm just going to simply accelerate to the left and let's make them pretty fast so we'll accelerate a thousand to the right sorry so now once this bullet gets spawned it's just going to zoom across to the right let's just test this see it in action and yep sure enough every time I press the space bar a bullet has spawned and it's zooming across to the right and go back in we can actually have the bullets collide with the blocker. Now because there might be quite a few bullets, it doesn't really matter which way around you do this. But I'm going to have the blocker collide with the bullets. You could have the bullets collide with the blocker, it doesn't really matter. And now, when I get into the game, press the space bar, you notice that the bullets are actually colliding with the blocker. Now if we set the restitution down on the bullets to zero as well, then we accelerate, we'll just leave that for now, we'll just show you what happens. Now because the bullets are moving in relation with the actor, and the actor is actually spinning when it's hitting the block, you can see the bullets have a little bit of a weird effect. If we do the acceleration in relation to the scene, and then go back. You can see they just hit the block and carry on. They still spin round and we can stop that by doing a fixed rotation. So now the bullets will stay fixed, they won't rotate round and when they hit the block they will actually just go over the top of it and carry on. So they just accelerate pretty much how they would if you shot them in real life. So that's a quick overview of game salad and what I would say to you is just don't be daunted by the fact um, that it is a little bit complex when you first open it up. You've got game attributes as well. Uh, let's make a, a quick game attribute here. We'll call this one bullet count. Now you can use these for lives, um, saves, loads. You can use the game attributes for a lot of different things. We'll just call this one a bullet count set it to leave it to zero at the moment. Now it's an integer so it's a it's going to be a whole number and you notice that you can add a boolean which is true or false, text, integer which is a whole number, real which has got decimal points, angle and index but uh, I'm just going to have the integer as the bullet count now. Now in the hero every time the space key is down space bars down then I want to try and count the bullets so I'm going to change attribute I'm going to come in here game that's the integer we've just made in the game attributes game bullet count to game bullet count plus one and then just to see this is working I'm going to create a simple actor I'll just put this one at the top here and we'll just call this one display bullet count. Now in here, we're just going to do a display text. Find the game attribute we made, the integer bullet count, and change the text color there to red. 
change the font to whatever you want. I uh, can change the size of the font. I can go back, press play, and now you can see the bullet counts at zero. And every time I press the space bar, the bullet count increases. Now you notice this actor, even though it's like a heads up display bullet count actor, it's actually scrolling along with my uh, with the scene, and I don't want that to happen. So what you need to do is go into scene layers, make a new layer. Now you notice the background is scrollable at the moment. You can change the name of the layers, we'll call this Heads Up Display. We can move this one to the top of the layer, so it's going to be above everything else. And we'll actually put that display bullet count in the Heads Up Display layer. Now that one's not scrollable, this one is. So that Heads Up Display bullet count now will always stay in the top right hand corner. And you can see, if I come across, it's always staying there because we've got it on a different layer and that layer isn't movable. So that's Darren. I'm going to sign off now. I hope this was a uh, pretty easy to follow introductory to Game Salad. What I will say is, like I've said before, please don't be put off. There is a lot to it, and it is a little bit confusing when you first open it up. But there's loads and loads of videos uh, on the Cookbook channel, and there's loads of projects that you can open up to get some uh, an overview of what what does what. And like I've said, just don't be put off. Just stick with it. Spend a couple of three hours with it every day you'll soon get used to how it works and we've got a great forum um, with guys there just waiting to answer any of your questions and if we can help we will help and like I said just have fun and sooner or later before you know it you'll get that game idea of yours onto the app store and fingers crossed it'll be a hit and you'll make loads of money from it so yeah bye for now guys hope you find this useful and see you soon